Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, Skylum Software released a new extension for Luminar Neo, Panorama Stitching. In today's video, I want to put this new extension to the test by stitching together six high-resolution images. These photos were taken with a Sony a7R IV. Those of you familiar with the Sony a7R IV know that it is a 60.2 megapixel camera. I shot these images raw, uncompressed. So the, the files are very large, like 122 to 125 megapixels each. Often, when you try to edit a large file, the application you're using will just lag, run slow, the fans will kick on in your computer, and sometimes it will freeze up or the app will crash altogether. Well, I want to see how well Luminar Neo and Panorama Stitching can handle these large files. Now, on top of all that, if you look at each of the images, you'll see that they're greatly underexposed. Uh, you can see the sky was quite dramatic, so I was exposing for the sky. Unfortunately, I overdid it, and they're really underexposed. So not only are we trying to stitch together six high-resolution large files, we're trying to stitch together six high-resolution large underexposed files. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I'm in the catalog section of Luminar Neo and Panorama Stitching is over here on the right hand side. It's right here at the bottom. To stitch together images, just drag two or more of them into this little window. So I'm going to click on the first one and I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one because I want to stitch all six. And then we're just going to drag it from there into this little window. Now, once you do that, you'll see they'll appear here and you have little triangles you could click on so you could go through each of them. But just don't click start right away because you have some options. To get to those options, click these little three dots. Then you'll see that you have the option to perform lens correction. And I do want to do that. I want to uh, do lens corrections for each of the individual six photos. Then when they're stitched together, it will look right. So I want to do that. I definitely want to de-vignette because really just about any lens around will put a slight vignette on your image. So it's going to be darker around the edges. And if you don't de-vignette ahead of time, what will happen is when it's stitched together, you'll get dark bands going out throughout the, you know, vertical bands going throughout the image. So you don't want that. So definitely de-vignette. Now, some lenses at times under certain lighting conditions will add some chromatic aberration. That's usually green or purple little fringing around edges. In this case, I don't think this lens did that at all, so I'm not going to click that. You may think, well, it's no harm in clicking it. Well, there isn't, but it will take longer for the stitch to happen. As a matter of fact, for every check mark you do here, the longer it's going to take for it to stitch everything together. Now, because these are large files and there's six of them, I'm not going to click that. It's just going to take too long. Uh, then if, like Luminar Neo examined these images, and if it noticed there was motion in the shot, this would be active ghost reduction. And then you could click that, and then you could choose a reference image. So that's the reference image. Anything that is movement off of that image will get reduced. So in this case, we don't have to do that. Now, your knee-jerk reaction when you're done here is to click this bottom button without looking. Well, definitely look, because that bottom button is remove all files. We don't want to do that. To close this down, just click outside of it. That's it. Now click start. Now what it's going to do, it's actually going to do like a preliminary stitch. But there's all these different kind of stitching modes you could choose from. And they're over here on the left-hand side. And you can see it's grayed out now. We have to wait for it to do this first preliminary stitch. And once it does that, we'll be able then to look at these different modes and compare them to one another. Because sometimes one of the modes, the stitching modes, will be superior to all the others. And you want to make sure that you're using the stitching mode that is best for your set of images. Now, again, these are high resolution, large files. It took a little while, but it still wasn't too bad. Now, this, as you can see, is active over here in the lower left. And it's a spherical. This is the spherical uh, mode here. And you can see that we have a lot of sky. We have some water, some land. Generally speaking, the spherical is usually a good balance. Uh, between them, but you can see because this was handheld as well, um, it's not perfect. So we have, you know, jagged edges, dead pixels around the edges. We're going to crop those away at the end. So we have to keep that in mind because when you choose different modes, you can see this one here gives us more sky, less water. Go to the Mercator 
one and you can see what that does. Go to this plain one and get that kick in. And you can see that one gives us a lot of sky, but less water. But you can see we have kind of a lot of water in the corners, but if I have to crop it up, then it's going to be pretty unbalanced, I think. We're going to have most sky and not as much water. So all this one looks pretty good because it seems to have the most live pixels. Um, it probably wouldn't be the best once it's cropped. So I'm just going to stay with that spherical uh, mode there. We'll stay with that and we'll click Stitch. Now once it does this, we'll have the option now to crop it. Now you don't have to crop it if you're doing some type of our project and you want this to look like this, don't crop. But I'm going to crop. And what I usually do is I go to the corners and drag in from the corner here till it's just on live pixels. Same thing over here. It's just got to drag that in just a tiny bit. Go to this lower right-hand corner, drag that up. And it looks like the left one is, yes, it is. So there's our crop. And you could, dra you know, you could drag around if you need to as well. But I think that's pretty good right there. Now we're going to click crop. And now there's our look. We could get a look at it. We could, yeah, we could go back a step with this arrow over here on the uh, left-hand side. But I like my crop. I think it looks good. So we'll click save. Now this is going to take a little while. Now it's doing the actual stitch and it's going to create this file. It's going to create a TIFF file. And the TIFF files are very large. And because this is six large images already, this is going to be a very large TIFF file. As a matter of fact, I did this ahead of time and the TIFF file is around 550 megapixels. So it's a super large file. You can see it's over here. And what it will do is it will create a folder called Panorama Stitching and it will put it in that folder. So we're out of our original folder. I was in working folder originally, and it put us in the panorama stitching folder, and there is our image. Well, now we could edit it, and let's just do a quick edit and see how well, uh, how fast it could edit this large file. Again, it's well over 500 megapixels in size. So I'm gonna try to go as quickly as possible with my edit because I'm a busy guy, right? So I'm gonna come in and like push up enhance quite a bit. That looks pretty decent. Then I'll go to develop and the sky to me looks pretty good, although maybe a little bit too blue, uh, but the land, it needs some work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to masking. We'll see how, how fast it could do an AI mask, because again, this is a super large file. And by the way, the most recent update they had to Luminar Neo, they talked about they made it faster. So you can see that was pretty fast. So I want to select everything but the sky. So I'll select the flora, the architecture, the water, and the natural ground, the man-made ground. That's what I'm going to add it. So we'll go to adjustments. Now it really is lagging, though it's not showing. But if I go in and move exposure up, see nothing happened yet. We have to really wait for the mask to kick in there, kicked in. All right, so that's good. So what I want to do here is I just, I want to balance it out a little bit by making the, the land a bit brighter. And that looks pretty good just like that. I'm not going to get too crazy. We'll go to color. And I think we're going to go, um, trying to think, oh no, we don't want to go to the develop. We'll go to color down here. I'm sorry. And then we'll go to HSL. Got a little confused. Then I'm going to go to luminance. And I mentioned this blue is a little bit too deep blue. So I'm going to go to the blue slider and I'll move that to the right to make that lighter. So I'm making the blues up there a little lighter. I could go to saturation and just take a little bit of that saturation away. Make it look a little more natural. Go to luminance again. And what I typically like to do when there's like grass and trees and whatnot, I like to try to add a little, no, little more total variance, I call it to it, by making the yellows a little brighter, in this case a lot brighter, and the greens darker. So you can see now the trees have like yellow tips and darker green you know, branches and whatnot. So I think it looks a little more, a little more total variance. And, you know, very quickly, I think we'll just finish it off with a vignette and just choose a darker vignette. That's it. And I really actually am pretty impressed with the, the, um, the panorama extension for Luminar Neo. It handled these large, large files pretty well. Stitched together fine. You can't see any flaws anywhere looks perfect. Um, the resulted image is very large because it is a TIFF file, um, but it seemed to handle it fine. I was editing fine. There was a little bit of a delay when I was doing the masking, 
I had to wait for it to find everything but the sky. But once it did, it worked fine and it wasn't lagging as I was moving the sliders and everything. So pretty impressed. This is the new uh, extension found in Luminar Neo for stitching together panoramas. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.